Hi, this is Randall Whiteman. Today I will be running through a brief overview of the part maintenance application in Epicor ERP version 10 using the standard demonstration environment. If you would like me to show you more detail on any aspect of this demo, feel free to leave a comment. OK, let's get started. So I'll use the part shortcut in my favourites. And in the demonstration environment, I'm going to use a part DCD 200 ML. OK, so I'll just do a quick overview of the uh, part maintenance application. It's uh, like many applications in Epicor. It uh, combines multiple, um, uh, multiple records in one, so the base part information as well as part revisions as well as part site information. And I'll go through each of those, not in detail, but just a quick overview. So the basic part information has the part number and description and the part type. So we can have manufactured parts as well as purchased or sales kit parts. There's a primary unit of measure, which is the inventory stocking unit of measure. And it can be uh, sold or purchased in alternate units of measure. There's also a base sales price and a part group and part class. The runout flag, uh, if you track lots or track serial numbers, if serial number tracking is turned on. And you also have a default costing method, which is then defaulted down to the site level, but you can change it at the site level. And also down here we have a non-stock item flag. Okay, moving on to revisions. So in this case, so a revision allows multiple versions for parts that are manufactured or configured. And in this case, there are two revisions. So we can see here that a, a revision ID, a description for the ID, and also the configurator ID. So if it is a configured uh, part, then you can put the configurator record ID and also the approved flag, so a part revision must be approved before it can be used. Okay, moving on, there's the audit log. So all changes to part revisions are logged. Over on the alternates tab, so an alternate allows a substitute part, which will replace a part on a sales order, or complement parts which creates a new line on the sales order when the base part is ordered. The units of measure tab shows multiple units of measure for the part and the conversion between those. So the lot information shows attributes if it is a lot tracked uh, item and the sites. So in the sites tab, this is where you set up for uh, various sites and you can have multiple warehouses in each site. So you would choose the site name, which warehouse is the primary warehouse, and also the costing method. So you can have, for instance, a manufacturing, a manufactured item being standard costed in a manufactured site, uh, but average costed in a retail site. Okay, you also have a type here. So in the site, it can be manufactured or could be purchased, but it could be transferred. So a particular part, for instance, if it was manufactured in the manufacturing site, you would set it to manufactured, but that same part in a retail site might be set to transfer. And here you would put which site it's transferred from for planning purposes and also the transfer lead time for planning purposes. And I won't go into a lot of detail, but there are lots of planning parameters and also multiple levels of hierarchy for those, those parameters. So you can see here we have min max safety stock. We also have purchasing parameters here. And we also have a planning sheet, which has a whole lot more 
planning parameters on it. Now warehouses, so I mentioned that sites, you can have multiple warehouses per site and here's where you set up the the default inf uh, the information on the warehouse. So you can have replenishment information here and you can set a primary bin and bin information although in the demo environment this particular part hasn't been set up. In terms of cycle counts at a warehouse level you can have cycle count information which will override the cycle count information set up at the site level that we'll have a look at shortly. There's also sales kit parameters for this part in this site and as I mentioned the site level cycle count parameters. So there you have a brief overview of the part maintenance features in Epicor ERP version 10. Thanks for watching and see you next time. This was a Whiteman Online presentation. For more great content, subscribe to the Whiteman Online YouTube channel and visit the website. I look forward to seeing you soon at Whiteman Online.